All right, the reason you're watching this video is you wanna know how to set up a Gantt chart within your Smartsheet. Well, this is your video. In this video, I'm gonna take by the hand, step by step. I'm gonna show you what to look for. I'm gonna show you some settings a lot of people don't even realize are within their Smartsheet that is crucial for a successful setup for your Gantt chart. And I'm just gonna, as I go through it, I'm just gonna basically explain what a Gantt chart is. In layman's terms, I'm gonna keep it very simple, very quick. Um, I like to put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everyone can reach it, so to speak. So after you're done watching this video, you will know what a Gantt chart is. And more importantly, you will know how to set one up successfully so that you will not fail within your Smartsheet. All right, let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to Workflow My Workload. I am your guide, Justin Razio. And today in this video, I'm gonna take you by the hand step by step in creating your Gantt chart within Smartsheet. Now in this video, we're gonna cover three things. The first one of which is I'm gonna explain very quickly in layman's terms what a Gantt chart actually is. And then I'm gonna show you how to set it up correctly within your Smartsheet. And then I'm gonna show you, the last but not least, how to manage it. So after you've created your Gantt chart, time goes on, you're starting, the tasks are being completed, um, dates are changing, things are shifting, how to manage all of those changes correctly. All right, let's dive into this training. All right, to create a Gantt chart, we're gonna start at the home screen here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this plus icon on the left banner here. And then we're gonna click create new. And you can use templates down here, but just know that they're usually pre-filled with uh, dummy data. And if you want to create, from, create, create, wow, excuse me, create a Gantt chart from scratch, that's what I'm going to show you today. So we're going to go over here to the top right to create new. I'm going to click Sheet, and then we'll call it Gantt Chart. How to make cereal. There we go. Okay, so we start with a blank canvas here. And this primary column, as you notice, is a little bit darker than the rest of the columns. This is your primary column. This is where I like to put the tasks. And so today we're gonna to create a Gantt chart on how to make a bowl of cereal. So I'm keeping it super, super simple um, just for the example so everybody can understand it. So we'll go ahead and call this project cereal and give it some life here change the settings here make this black we'll make this white project cereal and then we'll go ahead and give it three three different categories of tasks we're going to do prep and then we'll go ahead and do create and then we'll go ahead and do all right, so try to help me out here, but I don't need that. Drop it down to 10. All right, so for prep, we'll go ahead and we'll make this uh, nice blue color. For create, we'll make this a nice orange. And for eat, let's do purple. Make these bold. All right, so I'm gonna add some tasks underneath each one. So for prep, I'm gonna right click in this row underneath prep. I'm gonna click insert below. And we'll do task one. Spread this out a little bit. Task two. I think you're getting an idea here. And then task three. Task four. Task 
task five. And task six. Okay, there we go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to indent these subtasks. So the main tasks are prep, create, and eat. And then the subtasks below them, task one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to indent these. So in order to do that, you just click and drag, highlight what you want to indent. I'm going to click right here where it says indent. Do it for these right here for task three and four, and then task five and six. All right, and there's a reason I did this. You'll see in just a moment. The next thing I'm going to do is let's call this next column task description. Drag this out a little bit. And you know what? I already put my description right here, so I'm just gonna do this. Just doing control X or function X, and then control B or function V. For those who are curious, I'm taking this out. All right, almost done. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a start date and an end date. All right, so if we're calling three, we'll call this start date. And I'm actually gonna make this column property, this column type, an actual date. So we got a start date, now let's do our end date. And you have to have at least two date columns in order to have a Gantt chart. Closes up a little bit. If I highlight more than one column, grab one edge, you can shrink both of them down at the same time. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is a new column property type that many don't know about that's been added, and it's called duration. Duration, so I'm gonna click on duration. Just call it duration, make our lives easy. And click okay, so we have our duration. I'm gonna click save. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go up here to grid view and I'm going to choose Gantt View. Now watch what happens when I click this. Boom, I've got a Gantt to the right. Hey guys, real quick, if you're finding this helpful so far, I've actually created a free user guide. It's a PDF that'll be sent right to your inbox that gives you the top 32 functions that are the most successful within Smartsheet. I tell you what they are, I show you a brief description how to use them, and what instances to use them for. Again, it's a free PDF guide, it's one sheet, it's all yours, I created it just for you. Just click in the bio below and it's yours. All right, let's get back to this video. All right, so now we have our Gantt view. And the next thing that's vitally important in order for your Gantt chart to work properly is we're gonna go all the way over here to the right where you see this gear, this gear icon. This is to edit the Gantt settings or the project settings. So let's go ahead and click in this gear. And it's asking for your start date and your end date. Are these the columns you want to use? We only have two and I've already named start date and end date so it's pretty self-explanatory. But just know that if you had other date columns, this is where you can choose your start date and this is where you can choose your end date. If you want a completion column, you can add that as well. Um, I do not want to add that but that just keeps a percentage of what's been completed. Now the next thing is very important. You wanna make sure that you check this box right here where it says dependencies enabled. And it says, oh, you looks like you already created a duration column. Do you wanna use it? I'm gonna do yes. And we also, it's also gonna add another column called predecessors, which I'll get into in just a moment. Um, but that helps you link your Gantt tasks together. All right, the next thing here is your working days. Now by default, it says working days is Monday through Friday and length of days is eight hours. But if you wanna change this, you're gonna go into edit and then you can pick and choose what the working days are and then you can choose what the working hours are. And if you have a project where you don't want it skipping dates or only doing it every eight hours, I'm gonna show you a trick to get back um, to get past that so that it's doing it 
in real time. So like eight days is truly eight days. It's not eight working days. And I'll show you to do that in just a moment. All right, so that's how you change those. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna click OK. So if we scroll down here, you'll notice that now predecessors has been added. All right, so before I get into predecessors, let's focus on our next column, which is duration. Now, because we have two columns or start at an end date, watch what happens to the right when I start putting in dates. So today's September 5th, and then I'm gonna go ahead and let's say we're working until Friday, September 8th. Now, a couple things happened here. One, duration, it automatically knows it's four days, because it's 4D, which represents four days. And on my Gantt, it went ahead and put it out four days. We got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days. Now there's multiple ways to extend this. You can do this by taking your mouse and hovering to the edge of the bar where you get to these arrows, click and drag, and you can drag that out and it, and it extends it. Now, as I did that, see here before it was four days, now it's seven days and before it was whatever it was, the 8th, now it's the 13th. Now keep an eye on these right here. I shrink it back, it gets lower. I can also change this by changing four days. So if I wanna do four days, maybe I wanna put in 10D or 10 days. See how I extended it all the way out 10 days? And I extended it out as well, 10 days out, all the way to the 18th. Now, if I put an E at the front of this, it's not going to limit just working days. It's going to do all true days. So if I put an E in here in front, watch what happens to my taskbar right here. It's doing 10 actual days, not 10 working days. Again, I did this by adding the E in the front. And also, just so you know, it doesn't just have to be in days. You can also do in weeks, which is with a W. So let's say it's 10 weeks, extends way out. You can do 10 minutes. So this is this taskbar is going to get really small. You can do 10 minutes. Can't even see it really. So maybe we'll make this a uh, hundred or let's do a thousand minutes. So it's a few days there. You can even do seconds, which is nuts. So I put, take away the M, put an S, and second. So again, S for seconds, M for minutes, D for day, and W for week. Ooh, I don't want a thousand weeks. Let's do one week. And again, if you put an E at the front, it counts those acts. So if you have like five weeks, let's actually let's just do 10 days. If you have 10 days, these are actually 10 working days because again, in my settings right here, my working days are Monday through Friday. So it's counting actual 10 working days. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, skip Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, skip Monday, 10 working days. But if I want 10 actual days, 10 true days, just 10 days, I'm gonna put an E in the front, it lowers it to just 10 actual days. Hey guys, if this content has been helpful to you so far, I've actually created an entire course on Smartsheet. That's right, I cover Smartsheet from end to end, and I break everything down for you so that you will not fail. If you take this course, it will boost your confidence, it will help you get that raise that you're wanting to get, um, or even just build up your team within your company. But you will not fail with this Smartsheet course, and I hope you take full advantage of it. And you can find a link to that course down in the bio below. All right, back to our episode. Um, the last thing is uh, you can also change the length of this by simply changing the dates. So instead of 18th, if I choose 21st, extends it out. If I go back to just a few days, it shortens it. And as you notice here, we also have a gray bar at the top. This gray bar right here is the sum of all the tasks below. So keep an eye on this gray bar here. If I add another task, so task two, if I add dates for task two, 
let's say it starts on the 18th and it goes to the 27th. So I have our bar right here. The summary, because it's indented, the summary or prep right here, this gray bar is showing the total summary of everything. And as you notice here at the top for this, it's summing seven and eight, which is 17 days. And right here at the top, it's the earliest start date and the latest end date. And automatically does the math and the summing for us. Calculate, automatically does the calculation for us on summary. It's gonna do the same for these as well. All right, so let's add some more dates in here. Let's say 28th, going October. Hopefully it doesn't take this long to make a bowl of cereal, but this is the example we're using. And we'll go with that. Now what we can do is we can actually add these tasks all together. Let's double this up here. We can add these tasks all together. And to do that, we can do it by, or let's call them here, by the predecessors. And so what we can do is if we wanna connect task one to task two, so right here we have task one, and this row right here, task one, correlates with its own bar. And then right here we have task two, task two. If I wanna connect these two together, I can do this um, two different ways. I can take my mouse and see how I have a cross here right here. So if you click in the, in the body of it, not on the edge, but in the middle, if you click and drag, it gives you an arrow that you can connect to whatever you wanna to connect to. I just wanna to connect to the next one. And so what it does is it slaps it over and it connects it immediately to itself. Another way to connect these using these numbers for predecessor is I'll go ahead and delete this. So if I wanna connect these two together, maybe this is uh, out a few, mo few more days. If I wanna connect these two together without trying to drag and drop an arrow, I'm just going to put a number in the predecessor here. So right now for task two, I want it to be connected to task one. In order to do that, for task two right here, so row four, I'm simply gonna put in the number of the row that I want it to connect to. So task one right here is in row number three, row number three right here. So if I put a three right here at row number four, if I put a three right here for task two, Watch what happens right here. Put a three, enter, look at that, made an error for me. If I wanna connect task two to task three, I'm gonna go over here to task three, and I'm gonna put in the row number four because I want task three to be connected to task two, and task two is row four. So put a four here, boom, look at that. Same with this one, if I wanna put Connected to row six, I'm just going to six here. <clears throat> so on and so forth. And you can also change the colors if you really want to get fancy. You can go to color settings and you can change the colors of these. And whatever you want them to be. And say you have a path and say your Gantt chart is just getting crazy nuts on you. are like, oh man, I, I don't know what's connected to what and what's not being connected. If you right click on any one of these uh, task bars and you show and you click show driving path See how it highlighted that there it highlights everything and shows you the path. So if these were broken If I took this out It's showing me only this path now because this is no longer part of the path You do that by right-clicking And clicking show driving path you can turn it off by clicking hide driving path all right, so I hope this was helpful for you guys and this made a lot more sense for starting out on building a Gantt chart. I will see you next week. All right, you guys, take care and God bless.